this this whole thing? Oh, it's me. Right, so this is my gear top tip fouling winter review film movie thing. Where appropriate, I'm going to try and mention um, introductory sort of lower cost gear, and then move into intermediate, and then um, if there's some sort of pro high end stuff, I'm going to mention that too. So hopefully, get all the bases covered. Right, it's going to be quite long um, because I'm going to go from top to toe and mention all the gear that I think's essential and useful. So it's going to be long. Um, I'll include time stamps. So if you want to cheat and, and click, you could do that, I suppose. This is going to be riddled with top tips. So you need to watch the whole thing. It's going to, there's going to be little nuggets of gold dust. Yeah. So if you want dusty nuggets, or uh, watch the whole thing. Um, watch the whole thing. Uh, make a brew, a cup of tea, coffee, um, Horlicks, Ovaltine, Bovril. I like caps, but they're not an essential, are they? Uh, what is an essential is uh, a buff. This is how you put them on lot. Anyway, these things are chips chips. I was looking on sportsshoes.com. They've got like two for four pounds or something. Get a cool two pack of Innovate for 12 pounds, two for 12, it's pretty good. But yeah, just as many as possible. Can't have too many buffs. Moving down the body to the torso, probably the most important bit, because if you don't want to get hypothermia, you need to keep this bit warm. I think fell running is a two layer torso thing, almost always. When it comes to the base layer, again, there are two types. There's man-made fabrics and there's merino wool. Moving into the winter, I prefer wool. It is a little bit warmer. Downsides, it stays a little bit more moist, doesn't wick sweat away quite as well. Top tips, when it comes to uh, merino, you're just looking for something really thin, so it's as fine as possible. Innovate, do this top, it is really expensive, it's like 100 quid, so this is one more for the pros. It's really fine, it's uh, almost all merino, but then they put a little bit of lycra in it, which just gives it a little bit of stretch, uh, but also keeps its shape. Don't put pins through it, it doesn't like pins. Another interesting wool-based base layer is the uh, Brynja, they do this wool, it's like a string vest. It works really well. So yeah, Merino, good, pretty pricey, but yeah, look, look for those uh, thinner, lighter weight ones um, and they'll wick pretty well. But they won't wick as well as a man-made fabric. Man-made fabrics, there's one big tip if you don't want to stink. It's polygene. When you're looking for your man-made fabric base layer, just look through the bump, little cardboard hangers um, or look online. When you're looking for an orange logo with a hand on it, and I've tried lots of different so-called antibacterial uh, treatments. Polygene is the one that works. Montaigne do a top called Dart with long sleeves. It's 32 pounds. If you want to go slightly posher, Montaigne do the Saber. Really nice fit, thin, polygene treated top. Absolutely love that. Another top tip for a polygene top is Alpkit. Generally speaking, their fit doesn't really work for me. It's a bit wide, but they do some sort of pro, pro -y stuff called the Vapor. But the Vapor is really nice, really lightweight, and it's just $29.99. So another thing to look out for are base layers that are half wool and half man-made fabrics. This is uh, Primino. Bought this for myself for Christmas. It's not entirely stink-free, like a 100% merino top, but um, pretty luxurious. So you've got your base layer sorted. So then the second layer that you need on your torso is some kind of jacket. And I think you need a jacket pretty much all year round. Super lightweight, breathable, keeps the wind off you and really allows your base layer to hold a bit of warmth against your body. Really an essential bit of kit. Uh, it doesn't have to cost too much money. Some windproofs even have a DWR coating on them so they actually repel a little bit of water if you get caught out in, in the shower. So I made a quick note of some good windproof jackets. Innovate do the wind shell. I think that one doesn't have any kind of DWR, but breathes really well. That's uh, it's only 55 pounds. Um, it's a good, comfortable windproof. Uh, Salomon do their Agile Wind, which is 70, but at the moment it's 30% off, so that's 49. 
I guess these are sort of intermediate prices. You can always get cheaper stuff somewhere, I'm sure. Um, Montaigne do their Featherlight Trail Jacket, only 109 grams, that's about 70 pounds. Um, and the Om do the Sonic, a little bit more at 80 pounds. That is probably getting a little bit expensive for a windproof, but um, get what you pay for. Now, the second type of jacket that you definitely need is a decent waterproof breathable jacket, preferably a three layer. You can get two and a half layer, but I would recommend that this isn't an area to cheap out on, but there are still some good recommendations. One of the classics is the uh, Innovate Storm Shell. That is 180, I think, pounds. Uh, another interesting option is the Om Cam Leica. So the Om were the first, as I understand it, to do a sort of stretchy fabric. So if you don't like the Chris Packet Russell that a lot of these jackets make, the Om a little bit more than the Innovate, so it's 190, I believe. I've not actually ever tested that, but I know so many people that have, and everybody seems to really like it. A little bit of stretch, a little bit more comfort maybe, nice movement. But my recommendation for a three-layer, waterproof, breathable running jacket is the Outkit Gravitas, this thing. Now, the Gravitas is normally 160 pounds, which probably pretty good value actually but at the moment they've got 20 pounds off so it is 139.99 and it comes up to exactly where you want it so you can still breathe if you want to wear a pack over it uh, and it's going to be rubbing a lot you might want a slightly heavier weight jacket and the next one up they do is called the balance which isn't too much more and it's just a bit weightier a little bit more abrasion resistant and the balance is normally 180 but at the moment they've got it for 160. i'm aware that these jacket prices aren't super low they're definitely more the sort of intermediate and kind of pro <laughs> prices uh, i think it's probably one area just not not to cheap out on if possible as we move into the winter months and conditions get a bit worse i do like to wear a vest pack Looking at the uh, lower end of the market, Decathlon do a product called the Everdict. I haven't tested it, kind of looks okay. And it's 29 pounds, which does look like quite a good deal. It doesn't come with flasks, but it does come with um, the pouch in the back. Moving up slightly, uh, designed locally, Harrier. Haven't tried them myself, but uh, John uh, Felwyn and guys try them, says they're really good. Harrier do the Kerber and the Kinder, like a five and a 10 litre pack. They both look good. They're more like 55 pounds to 59 pounds. There's loads of good options out there. I really like the uh, Montaigne Fang five litre that seems more than five litre. That's about 95 pounds. That's really comfortable. It's got the uh, Velcro tummy hugging strap. Oh, it's also got a pocket on the back that's away from your body. So in, in the summer, you can put your sandwiches in there and they don't get hot and sweaty. So that's a, a good little tip. But my absolute pro tip is the Salomon Advanced Skin 12 no longer in their s lab range so it's a little bit better value but it's quite expensive it, it's normally 125 at the moment it's 100 pounds and that may sound quite a lot but you do get two flasks with it salomon flasks are really good they're the best flasks i think they're, they're a narrower shape so they pull in closer to your body they sell those for 20 something pounds each so you're kind of getting 40 something pounds worth of soft flasks uh, with your Solomon pack. This is the best pack on the market, I'm convinced. So moving down to your legs, uh, firstly, underwear. One recommendation here, and that is Runderwear. Uh, no chafing, no problems there. These are currently 17 pounds, down from 20. It's really worth it. Uh, I've used these so much, and they do uh, men's and women's and sports bras. I haven't tested the sports bras. And uh, yeah, do they get stained? Lots of use. No. Now, I know a lot of hardy fell runners do like to wear shorts all year round. I do get that. I don't tend to feel cold too much in my legs. However, call me Nesh, as we say around here, but I think, I think it's tights weather in the winter. When you're looking for tights, make sure they've got good size pocket because you can get buffs and gloves and all that kind of thing. Maybe even a, a phone. If you go too cheap with tights, they don't tend to have enough panels and then you find that they rub uh, or they're not very comfortable. Um, you can, obviously you can buy tights for 20, 25 pounds at uh, Decathlon, somewhere like that. If you just move up to about 50 pounds, uh, you're looking at uh, Ron Hill. 
really well made tights. Stepping up slightly further and what I really think of as being a staple bit of the uh, wardrobe are the Montaigne Trail Series. They're about 60 pounds, really stretchy, really comfortable. My expensive pro tip, especially if you have long legs, are the 2XU MCS. Have I got that the right? Yes. They come in lengths, absolutely brilliant. So I ordered a medium T, MT, medium tall. And if you get annoyed by the little gap above your socks and below the end of your tights, uh, these don't have that, spot on. Really expensive, uh, but they are a compression tight. So a little bit more technical, but yeah, RRP 105. Moving down a bit further, socks. Well, really, you just don't want blisters. So the top tip there is to either wear two pairs of socks so that the socks rub against each other rather than the socks rubbing against your feet. Or probably better still are the twin layer socks. And there's a few options there. Underwear again, they do some good, good socks that are lasting well for me, about 15 pounds. I think my favorite at the moment are 1,000 Miles. They do some socks called The Breeze. They are like 12 99 or something. Really good price for a very good quality twin layer sock. So that's my, that's my sock tip. So what about shoes? Well, that really is uh, too big an area to get into in this video, except to say that I think most fell runners need two types of shoe. Uh, you obviously need a fell shoe, the cross talon here, not the X talon, the cross talon is one of the classic sort of lightweight, low to the ground, gnarly, grippy fell shoes. You definitely need something like this, especially in the winter. This is obviously designed to grip in wet conditions, so it will have fairly pointy, big lugs. It will clear mud away well. But I also think you need a trail shoe and a trail shoe has its own set of advantages. While it won't be uh, as grippy, it will work better on the road sections and the hard packed trails. You can get shoes that sit in the middle somewhere like the uh, Terra Ultra here from Innovate, but it doesn't have the gnarly full on grip that you might need, especially if you're running quickly in soft conditions. Just looking at the uh, grippy end of the, of the market, one of my favorites is the Cross Talon, Ultra 260 has a, a, a wider fitting, a slightly surprising shoe from uh, Hoka One. One is their Jaws Evo, also loads of grip, about £110. Don't tend to see that in sales very often, but that's a really good shoe. Regarding how much you should be spending on shoes, there are some cheap options. Obviously, trail shoes you tend to be able to find better deals when it comes to the out and out fell shoes there's there's less options for for bargains oh sports shoes do their higher state uh soil shaker they look a bit clumpy and, and heavy i haven't tested them um and the the lugs look too close together to clear properly but hey they, they are 30 pounds um then start fitness do their uh, cheviot the normal cheviot has a slightly strange rounded heel profile i have tried that i didn't kind of get on with that but i've got friends that use the cheviot pace which is a a lighter shoe, uh, it looks like it's got loads of grip and that is also 30 pounds. So there's some, there are some cheap options out there. To my mind, shoes cost about 100 pounds and then you look for them in a sale and if you can get them for 60 or 70, you, you're doing well. So that's kind of where my head's at with uh, the price of shoes. So what else? Well, uh, it's definitely gloves weather. Generally speaking for fell running, I think you just need a pair of thin running gloves. These are Ron Hill, about £12 for some good, well-made gloves. You can go a little bit cheaper at somewhere like Decathlon, spend seven or eight pounds. Uh, you only have to spend about £25 at Ron Hill and then you, you're into winter gloves, which are thicker. And when, on the very cold days, you might want some proper thick winter gloves. Another favorite of mine are the Innovate Extreme Thermo Mitt. Now these are about £35, I think, and they're a fleece lined mitt as you can see mitts are really good shape for for running because you can ball up your hand inside if you need to just get a little bit of extra warmth my expensive pro tip are the montane minimus mitt these are expensive they're like 60 pounds these work like your jacket it's like a um, fully waterproof breathable mitt so you don't often need something like this but when it's really raining down and you've got water pouring down the outside of your jacket these are so good 
so when they're good they're great and they'll go they're big so they'll go over other gloves and finally i promise it is finally head torches again it's a big old subject um i've tried cheap head torches and it never kind of works i do think you need to spend a little bit more and my tip is really just there's just two brands to look at and that is silver and petzl both of these brands really support their their products and they're really honest about the lumen output so you can compare between those two brands they use the same sort of industry standard way of testing brightness which is a good thing you'll also be able to get spare parts from both of these brands for years and years to come they, they really look after you as a customer in that way i was just looking around there's a really good deal at the moment on the silver trail speed 4 xt that's a pretty high-end torch it's normally 200 um, sportsshoes.com have got that for 120 120 pounds still a lot of money but it's a really high end more than a thousand lumen head torch that will also work on you on your mountain bike uh, as well so that's a really good high-end option i think if i had to pick a favorite of the two yeah probably just about petzl um, this is their neo or now i've had this for seven years still works perfectly i then got the updated plus which is the even uh, even more lumen uh, and that is that is great however um, I did a, a group test recently lots of different head torches and this this is such a solid recommendation I've seen people recommending a newer petzl torch uh, that is missing a key feature and to me this is the absolute pick of the bunch I guess it's a mid-range torch, really. It's this Swift RL. You can find this for around 70-ish pounds, which is a mid-range sort of price, I think, but it really competes with pretty high-end products. The uh, Swift RL is actually more powerful than the, uh, the Neo, about half the weight. It's a simpler product, so it doesn't have the split battery on the back. 900 lumen, so really, really bright. The best thing about a lot of Petzl products is the reactive lighting and what that does is turns down the power of the output when you don't need it. If you haven't experienced it, it probably doesn't sound very cool, but it really is. You know, aim your head down at some light coloured ground or the snow and instead of being blinded back, it just turns the torch way, way down. And then as soon as you look up into the distance and you need full power, it goes full power. This is the best of the bunch of the Petzl range. So I think that's it. That's my top to toe recommendations for fell running gear. Hopefully somebody's found that useful. Uh, I never say this, but please do the like and the subscribe and click the bell if you want to be notified of future videos. That would help me out and hopefully I can um, grow the channel. It's very tiny at the moment, but um, I'm going to keep putting the effort in and, and try and put out loads of videos in 2021. I hope this year is better than the last one. Nuggets, nuggets of gold dust. Anyway, um, 